going to take a look at something called Jitter, um, J-I-T-T-E-R. And I have a 555 timer here, and I'm going to show its jitter on the oscilloscope over here. Sorry, it's a little off kilter there, but you get the idea. Um, so I'm triggering on the waveform and then zooming in. So right now, the trigger um, is uh, way over over here somewhere it's 72 milliseconds that way okay and uh so we are at five microseconds per division but the first trigger is way over there and so the first trigger is going to look really really good but then as you go out in time the variability of capacitors and everything is going to move it's going to uh add up Okay, so the longer you wait, the more jitter you have in this particular instance, where you're triggering on one event, but then waiting a long time and seeing, are we still stable out some distance? Okay, and obviously we are not. And then we're going to do something called a histogram. So on this machine, you can just draw a little box, and then you can say histogram, and then it will reset everything. And then what it'll do, it'll, it'll t take wherever that's happening and it's giving you a little graph down here and it's going to build up statistics of what's the probability of the edge being somewhere. And you could look to see if it's Gaussian or not. And uh, you can see that we're kind of moving, kind of moving out of our box right now. It's drifting, it's drifting everything. But you get the idea we're going to be taking a look at the probability of an edge being in some, in some place. Okay. All right, so uh, obviously this is a super slow circuit uh, just to demonstrate it. But what happens when you're at, uh, you know, some fast gigahertz and you want to measure jitter? So if you're operating on uh, some type of fast data, uh, serial data, you have to make sure that you don't have a lot of jitter. Otherwise, you can't decode it correctly whether it's a, a, a hard disk, you know, SATA interface or an Ethernet interface or whatever it is, fiber optic interface, you have to, you have to measure jitter and it's not an easy thing, not an easy thing to measure. All right. So let's talk a little bit about jitter on paper. So I found a couple of good papers, um, app notes from a key site, one's called jitter analysis for a particular oscilloscope, but, um, it talks about uh, it talks about jitter where you have an edge that goes back and forth and then you draw the little box and you do the little waveformy thing. So this is exactly what we just did on on my uh, on my my HD3. Um, sometimes uh, you have a, a, a strange statistics and that's if your jitter uh, varies with a sine wave. A sine, the integral of a sine wave is going to look something like this, where uh, the sine wave goes up and then it kind of stays there and then it comes down, right? I mean, it goes up and down, up and down. But if you think about it, it stays in the up position a lot longer than it stays in the, in the, in the transition. The transitions are fast and then it kind of stays around for a while. And that's what we see here is that the transition time is about the equal probability there, but there's more probability of it being on this edge or more probability of it being on this edge. Now, why would you have jitter that's a function of a sine wave well let's say that you have a jitter you have a 555 timer and you have ripple on the power supply so the ripple on the power supply is sinusoidal that ripple that voltage ripple can then cause your oscillations to vary uh, with that with that vcc and then you'll get some condition like this where it's actually induced by ripple on your power supply all right and then it talks about other things. So let's let's uh, look at something else. So this is a nice uh, diagram here of jitter in total. So there's something called uh, JT uh, TJ, which is total jitter. So what is jitter made out of? Well, we talked about periodic jitter just now. Here's periodic jitter PJ which is uh, a function of something going on that's periodic. There's totally random jitter just because that's called RJ, random jitter. Periodic jitter can be uh, 
some sub rate jitter, which we just talked about. Maybe your power supply is rippling. And so there's some sub frequency that's causing the modulation that causes the sub rate jitter, or the, maybe your power supply is just randomly changing for whatever reason, then you'll have uncorrelated, um, PJ, uh, then the data itself, sometimes maybe a, there's differences between different bit patterns and stuff, and you'll get, you'll get a deterministic jitter DJ, which has to do with what is the data that you're sending out data dependent jitter DDJ or symbol to symbol data in a, in a serial chain, there might be symbols being sent and some symbols are jittery uh, different than other symbols. Uh, anyway, it gets complicated at these, at these really fast things. So there's, there's a data dependent jitter, which is composed of inter symbol, inter symbol interference or duty cycle distortion DDs. So it's all of these acronyms in here and all of this, all of this stuff. All right. So, uh, let's go over to my new box and take a look at what it does as a jitter tool. Okay, um, we are going to be taking a look at this thing. It is just a 125 megahertz canned oscillator in a little box. It's just a TTL 125 megahertz. Um, and we're going to be looking at the jitter on this oscilloscope, the, the jitter mode. Okay, uh, scope mode is just going to look like a square wave. Uh, but in jitter mode, um, so in jitter mode, whenever you enter jitter mode, it's going to look at the incoming signal. It's going to automatically scale it. It's going to automatically detect, a, it's going to um, do a, a, a clock recovery. It's going to do a, a bit patterns and everything. And it's going to trigger on that thing. So you build up a, a model of the incoming waveform over a thousand data points and then it says that is the clock and then it's going to reference any jitter from that clock that it generates and it will give you uh it will give you data okay it's limited to anything greater than 50 megahertz so you can't look at anything below 50 megahertz um, so I can't look at something like a rubidium standard that's 10 megahertz. I can't do that. But this is a little clock at 125, and we can take we can take a look at that. Okay. So as soon as you push the trigger button, jitter button, I mean, you get a whole bunch of displays and stuff. So we'll take a look at each one of these. Um, so the first one here is RJ divided by PJ, which is the random jitter and the periodic jitter plotted together. Uh, the next one is total jitter. Um, and it looks as though you kind of have a two state thing. Um, this is probably the rising edge and the falling edge type of thing. I'm not quite sure. There's probably some um, distortion in the um, duty cycle. So that's probably why you're seeing these separated. This is the duty cycle of distortion. Um, if you look at them together, uh, it just plots everything on top of one another. It's the same as all those other graphs that they just get plotted on one another. Uh, there's the data dependent. Uh, the data dependent one is this, and it's just either a high or a low, a one or a zero type of thing. And those are just two different spots. Okay, <clears throat> so I think that's what, if we go back and we look at the total jitter, you can actually see the little green thing kind of plotted here and here. So that's kind of where the two highs and lows are, and then the, the deviation from those, and then the, the uh, random. So anyway, it does a whole bunch of things, <laughs> a whole bunch of stuff that I don't understand. Down here at the bottom, uh, we have total jitter at 181 picoseconds. We have de data or D data dependent at, uh, let's see, D is a deterministic jitter. <laughs> deterministic jitter at 140, random at three, periodic at 34, data dependent at 111, 
data, no, duty cycle distortion at uh, 111. That's probably why these are separated, the duty cycle distortion. PJ, periodic jitter, 11, um, might be power supply ripple or something like that. And uh, the inter, what was the ISS? Uh, inter symbol interference. We don't have any symbols, so that's zero. Anyway, there you go. Look at that. You got all kinds of, we can make that disappear and make these things big. But yeah, all kinds of cool stuff here. Um, just from pushing one button. You pay extra for that on this oscilloscope. It's, uh, it's something that is uh, an option. But anyway, I wanted to demonstrate it because it's right there on the front panel jitter. And that's one of the main reasons people buy these boxes is to do jitter analysis and, and, uh, and uh, eye diagrams. Uh, and yeah, so there you go. There's jitter. I don't really understand much of it, but it's fun to push the button.